Welcome back to Creating Stuff with Jim. I'm Jim, it's time to create something. video uh, I'm gonna be actually honest with you this this video is gonna have a, an extremely small target audience uh, <clears throat> is because the only reason you're watching this video is because you're looking for a specific piece of information um, I don't foresee this video to be popular but you know what sometimes that's not the reason why you do things you don't do things to be popular you do things just so you can convey some knowledge and some information so but anyways in, in this one uh, right here is I have a York AC compressor and in the off-road community it is very common to convert these AC compressors to function as air compressors so it's very nice to have a built driven air compressor on your off-road vehicle or any vehicle for that fact <clears throat> so you can get, com get a, not only compressed air but a relatively high volume of compressed air so you can actually do some real work with it so but as it turns out, there is a modification that you can, that there is a problem that uh, I've had, and this is the solution for it. I didn't come up with the solution, I found it, but I'll be honest, the solution was kind of difficult to find. It took a lot of digging on the internet. I was trying to find the end of the internet uh, in order to find it. So hopefully I can make the solution a lot easier for somebody else to find. So, <clears throat> but uh, anyways, now first of all, the problem that I had which I'm sure a lot of other people have, is my York air compressor is, unfortunately, the trucks I run, for stuff like this, I have to build everything myself. There is no off-the-shelf kit that I can buy. I have to build everything myself. So, I had my big red Toyota, which, I mean, I've had this truck since I was 20 years old. Um, I had a 22 RE four-cylinder, which uh, I had, I originally mounted a York compressor on it, and it was on that truck for every bit of 25 years, if not longer. Um, and for the last 15 years that it was on that engine, I was getting a lot of oil out of the air system. So, um, like when I'm airing my tires up running air tools such as that. I mean, you connect the air hose, you get your hands get oily. So, that, I mean, it's just really kind of an inconvenience. So, and I'll be honest, and I just thought that the compressor was worn out. Um, it was, I mean, it was used when I got it. I just put it on my truck and ran, and, and ran it. So, uh, I just thought the thing was worn out. Well, here a couple years ago, that same truck, I decided to finally, uh, go up a level, go up a notch or two. Um, and I finally pulled the four cylinders of fuel injected fury out. Um, <clears throat> I drove that truck many years like that and I swapped in a Tacoma V6. Well, when I was doing this whole process, once again, I had to build the, the complete mounting system for the, for the compressor uh, because there's no, no kit made for that truck or my application. So, and I was like, you know what, if I got to build a bracket and I got to do all this modification, since, I mean, I thought the compressor was worn out, so let me just go ahead and throw a new compressor in it. Well, unfortunately, it, by the time I swapped the motor in, before I finally got the compressor mounted and in and working, it was close to two years. Now, this life gets in the way, it's what it is. Uh, but I was very glad to have it back. Well, when I, this is the brand new compressor that I put in, and I put it in, and this thing pumped even more oil than I thought the one that was worn out. So, and I was like, how could this be? <laughs> it's, it's like, this, 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 this is not good. So, uh, anyway, so I searched the end of the internet, and I found very obscure, they're on a chat board or something like that, a solution for it so uh, but anyways well I'm going to show you uh, show you the solution and what you got to do to fix it because I've already done it and actually the funny thing was uh, this was the original compressor I bought for my motor swap and um, I was so pissed that it was blowing oil I went ahead and ordered another one so now I got two and I'm actually setting this compressor up for a friend of mine uh, but that might be a video for another day so um, I've already done the modification, it works. Uh, so, but like I said, I want to modify, uh, modify this so this doesn't blow oil, oil either. So, I tell you what, I, I think we got, I need to quit yakking about this and let's go ahead and tear this compressor apart. All right, 
right now that we're now that we're start getting ready to tear this apart the one thing i want to point out to you is <clears throat> and this this will be this applies for a new compressor or an old one is basically if you look real close right there let's see um basically you're gonna have a you're gonna see a big s and there's the word suction and then over here you have the word discharge so you want to look for you want to look for the word suction and discharge uh, they can be on either side. It all depends on how they they set the reed plates up. So, uh, but basically, since this is the suction side, suction side, this is the side we're going to be looking at. So now let's go ahead and pull the pull the head off of this compressor. And just so you know, there are many variations of the style of fittings that they have, uh, many different variations of this compressor. So sometimes you might have to be adapt and adapt, improvise, and overcome sometimes. But now all the bolts are out, we're gonna pull the head, the head off. Now, luckily, this is a <clears throat> this is a brand spanking new compressor. So I'm gonna be able to reuse all these gaskets. Um, not that important right now but if you have an older compressor uh head gaskets uh this stuff's very is still very available so um but like i said if you do an older com if you're doing this modification to an older compressor you're gonna probably have to get new head gaskets uh but i am cheating so uh unfortunately sometimes i think i'll make a rule just to break it but uh i'll do whatever it takes to get the job done all right now that we have this compressor off uh, now we have the cylinder head off of this compressor. This is the suction side. So now um, I'm gonna have to take the camera off the tripod because I need to get you closer so I can show you something. Stand by. All right, now, now that I got the compressor in a better spot with some light and I got my camera handheld, now I wanna point out to you what's causing the problem is once again, we identified this side of the compressor was the suction side. So you look down here, so there that right there is an oil passageway and if we go out here on the outside there's a casting and this casting goes all the way down i could take the compressor clutch off and basically there's a little a little eccentric down in the hub down there that pumps the oil up so since this is the suction side the refrigerant would be pulled in from here run through the pistons and then out the other side so if you pull the oil in the suction side the oil will get sprayed on the cylinder walls uh, while the compressor runs so if a closed system ac system that that's that's great but unfortunately since we're turning this to an air compressor that's not good because that puts oil in our compressed air so <clears throat> we can't have that so what we're going to do is we are going to plug that hole so uh, all right so let me get set get set up to do that All right, uh, I should have run that tap in far enough. Uh, you only have to tap in that far. That's all you gotta do. So now I got the, the tap run in. So I had to turn the camera off. Sometimes you just gotta, <laughs> you just gotta work. So, uh, so now I'm gonna run, pull the tap out. And there, uh, uh, hopefully you can see, it's a little hard, but the grease held the chips right there, right there in the tap. So the chips didn't fall down inside where they could run around and destroy something. So uh, that worked out really well. I'm real happy with that. All right, now we're gonna clean this up just a little bit. My favorite brake clean, my favorite solvent. I'm gonna clean some of that grease and uh, make sure there's no metal chips sitting uh, sitting inside there. So that's looking good. Hit, 
Hit it one more time. So, all right, that is looking good. So now we gotta put the set screw in. So that's rather small. So I was able to put that on the end of a Torx driver and I, I am putting a little bit of RTV on there just to make sure it seals. Um, use whatever RTV you want. I don't think it's gonna make a whole, whole lot of difference. All right, there, now you can see the set screws in, is threaded in place. It's all sealed up. So this, this compressor, should, compressor should be able to make compressed air without dumping oil in the air system. Now we gotta start, now we gotta put this head, put the head back on. Well, there you have it. The compressor's all back together, it's set up, so it can make compressed air without dumping, air, dumping oil into your air system. So I think this is gonna work out very well. So, uh, but the last I put it back together, uh, I did torque the head bolts, uh, 15 foot-pounds is the spec for those. Uh, and once again, if you're doing this to an older compressor that's got some age that's been used, uh, you're gonna probably wanna put a new head gasket in. Luckily, this is a brand new compressor, so I was able to reuse the head, reuse the head gaskets without an issue. So uh, this is this is going to work just fine. So, but once again, this this is actually meant for a very small audience because this is a this is something that you need to do if you're building your own belt driven air compressor system. Uh, because a lot of times these compressors you can uh, they sell an aftermarket kit to for your vehicle and they sell you the compressor. Well, guess what? They already they do the mo this modification before they sell you the compressor. So if you're buying a pre-made kit, you don't have to worry about this. So that's why this is a very small for a very small audience. But for the few people that would like to to learn this or be <laughs> or know how to fix this problem, there you go. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, <clears throat> if you like stuff like this, uh, please please let me know in the comments. Uh, if if you want any more information, I'll be more than happy to provide it. Uh, so, but uh, if you like the video, please, please like it, subscribe if you're not, and, uh, and share it with your friends. So, tell you what, I'll see you on the next one.